go ahead and look at uh, heat change within a chemical reaction or physical reaction inside a calorimeter. The equation that we're going to use, we've seen it before, Q equals mc delta T. In this equation, Q is the energy that is transferred in the reaction. That means if I um, run a chemical reaction inside a solution, that it's going to heat the solution or it's going to cool the solution. The amount of energy in joules is going to be that value Q. So it's in joules, capital J, we're looking at. Now the M is the mass. Now in chemistry, we're going to use the mass in grams. In physics, we use it in kilograms, and that defines the value of C, the specific heat. C, the specific heat, is going to be in joules per gram degree Celsius in chemistry, or kilojoules per um, kilogram if it's in physics. So C is the specific heat. In joules per gram degree Celsius, we'll deal with one in chemistry here for a little while. Now, the change in temperature is the tricky one. The change in temperature, delta T, is equal to the change, the final, minus the initial temperature. Okay, and I'll put it that way as T sub F minus T sub I. Change in temperature. Now, that's always going to be in degrees Celsius, and so if you look at your specific heat, joules, grams, and degrees Celsius. That's what we have for each one of our units that we see. That in Celsius degrees. Okay, now let's look at how an actual problem would be used dealing with this type of setup. Let's set it up and specify, for instance, if I had a given mass of water, let's say I have 14.2 grams of water and it's heated. from 22.0 degrees Celsius, which is about room temperature, to 65.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, it's inside a chemical reactor, so it's insulated from the outside. And I want to know, based on that, how much energy was associated? Well, if I look at my equation, Q equals mc delta T. I know my mass. My mass had already said it was 14.1 grams. 14.2 grams. I know that it's water, and so I've memorized my specific heat of water. I know it's 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And I know that my temperature changes from 65.5, my final temperature, to my initial temperature, 22 degrees Celsius. Now, that gives me my value of Q, the heat that's actually absorbed when I go through that warming process. So let's go ahead and put that in the calculator. I get from that reaction then, the value of my number is equal to 2582 joules. Now, I, watching my significant figures from this, I guess I had three significant figures in each one of them, that should have been a point zero. So my correct answer would have been 2580 joules of energy that were absorbed by the water. Now let's see where these reactions actually come from. Let's say that I take a bomb calorimeter, a device that's used to hold a substance, I burn it in the presence of oxygen, the water on the outside of the bomb calorimeter is actually heated. The food on the inside of the calorimeter that's being consumed decreases in temperature and all the energy enters the water. So we are now able to actually calculate the amount of energy that was associated with the combustion of that food. And that's what you see on the side of your uh, containers when you buy them in the store. So many calories. Uh, for instance, a soda pop that has 170 calories is associated with this kind of transition. Now that's in calories rather than joules. We deal with the joules, but there is the conversion. One calorie is equal to 4.18 joules. That needs to be remembered as well. So we now have a way of calculating the transitions. Now ways that you can actually see this problem change. We've looked for Q. 
If I had Q, I can isolate mass if I didn't know the mass. Or I can isolate the specific heat if the specific heat wasn't given. Or the change in temperature. So this has four variables. We need at least three of them to solve for it. We just isolate the unknown variable and work it through like that. Let me show you an example of that problem. Let's take and add 2,500 uh, joules to a sample of water. The water heats by, oh, let's say it heats by 42.5 uh, degrees Celsius. Now, from that, I want to be able to calculate what was the mass of the water. Now, a lot of times we don't use water, but when we use water, we know it's 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And I know my temperature change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate M in my equation. Q divided by C and delta T is equal to the mass of water. So numerically, 2,500 joules divided by my C, 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius and also divided by my change in temperature, which is 42.5 degrees Celsius. Now look what happens to my units. Joules will cancel out with joules. The degree Celsius will cancel out with degree Celsius. Now I have the grams in the denominator of a denominator, which really will bring it up into the numerator. So all I need to do then, in my math calculation, 2500 divided by 4.18 and divided again by 42.5, and I get the value 14.1, or the two significant figures, 14 grams H2O was going through that change. Quite simple, quite straightforward, using Q for the energy, M for the mass, C for the specific heat, and delta T for the change in temperature.